How you folks doing? My name is James Clem. Whether it be the morning, midday, or the evening, anywhere in the world, thanks for watching this video. This video is about copy and mirror. It's an update video to prior copy and mirrors. I love copy and mirrors in this Eric software, many because you can get that fingerprint. There's two things that really help the process. Number one is now that we have view options back in the software, it's really easy to set up the model axis and then find that model axis again with the 2D grid to make sure we're getting the alignment and the shape and the measurements of our tooth the way we want it. Number two, let's bypass that position tool with another tool that works better and that's the anatomical for direction tool. That tool allows us to move the tooth in the proper tip and torque without messing up the emergence and it really saves a lot of time in your design process so let's go ahead and get started with this workflow, designing copy and mirror using the proper tools and the steps so we can be very proficient and retain that fingerprint of the adjacent central. This is my favorite design sequence when I'm doing a central in the Cirrus software. So let's go ahead and get started. Copy and mirror, one of the best features in Cirrus software, set up your administration screen. Our first step in the model screen is to verify the model axis. This will set up the axis that we need for this anterior tooth. Midline is always number one, and the smile plane is second over that. Our next step is to detail and draw the margins. This is a nice feature, particularly with the prime scan, even though this is on a model. We can see margin clarity extremely well in prime scan, and I'm very grateful for that. When we need a better view of that margin for clarity, turn the model upside down with the model base off. We can see a really nice outline of the margin, particularly if it's sub gingival. Our next step is to clarify the copy line that's in the model screen here. It's the last step we're going to proceed with before we propose, draw that copy line about a millimeter away from the margin and down to the depths of the incisal embrasures. First step in the model axis is go to view options and click on the model forward. That's your model axis that we set up in the model screen. That's the angle we want. Let's define the silhouette of the tooth. Two, directional circular tool is one of my favorites. We're working on a silhouette, slightly retrocline proposal. Use the position tool to tip that tooth forward. But here's the caveat. Look at the cervical zone. It over proposes and messes up that proposal. I don't like that. It's going to take a lot of extra design steps to correct. So let's back up, refine this tooth position using the anatomical for directional tool to slightly push that tooth forward. That's a tip position. And you'll see that the cervical zone remains intact. I stay away from that position tool as much as I can because of this one reason. It messes up the emergence. Proceed with the silhouette refinement using the two directional circular tool. I love that tool. Small motions. Use the 2D graft and those cells within the graft for dimensional alignment to the adjacent central. It doesn't have to be a perfect match. In other words, it doesn't have to be perfect symmetry, but we do want to keep it in harmony. I do like that view option to keep that reference for our incisal edge and the length. Continue using the two directional circular tool to fill out the emergence and any subtle enhancements desired. When closing a cervical interproximal embrasure, close from the lingual. That's a universal principle in the virtual design. Check the lingual thickness and correct accordingly. Two directional tools, my favorite for most of my motions here. And you can see that we haven't really used the form tool at all yet, but we will before we finish. Reset our model axis using the view options. Subtle refinements as needed. Then the last step is check emergence and proximal contacts. Here we want aqua for Emacs with fine or extra fine mill. Use the smooth and the removal tool at 
10%, so it doesn't divot that inner proximal surface. For proximal contacts, I often toggle back between the smooth and the removal. At smooth, it's about 50% strength. It flattens the contact. And for subtle refinement, often we'll go to the removal tool at 10%. So keep those two numbers in mind. Last step before we mill is to work on those cervical margins, particularly on the labial here. I see this often in the software is slightly concaved. The way around that is to use the smooth tool from the cervical angle at 50%. So you smooth it first, and then we're gonna add back from the cervical margin. That's how we correct that under emerging contour. Now it's over emerged. It's easy to fix. We'll go back to the smooth tool at around 50% and just smooth that angle. And now we have the emergence that we desire for the case. Reassess the tooth with the 2D grid. Make sure all the features are there that you want. Our goal here is to get 95% of that tooth. So when we mill, all we do is texture and we'll have that restoration finished for stain and glaze. So that's the workflow for the copy and mirror in the software. You can see that the steps are fairly streamlined. Whenever we're using the two directional circular tool, you'll note that we use small little motions, knowing the fact that there's certain characteristics within the software, and that is usually right above that margin, right? It's a little concaved. And we went through the process of using the smooth and the addition tool to correct that. But it's the angle of the tooth that you have to work on. And I see this all the time in my classes is that is you have to rotate the model. So you're almost looking inside the model. So when you smooth and you add at that cervical margin, you're pulling it toward the margin. So keep that in mind. But the software does work fairly well. It's a whole lot easier than doing a traditional wax up. Each software has its own characteristics to it. It's a behavior personality. And when you learn how to work around that, it can be very proficient for you. If you have any comments or questions, make sure you post them below. And I'll see you folks in that next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.